Are we live? Yeah, we are live. Okay. Oh, hello everyone. My name is Martin Danjou and I'm here with the uh, Google Summer of Code participants for the coding phase two, part two demonstrations. And um, so welcome everyone. All right, so let's go through a quick introduction of Jenkins and Google Summer of Code. Um, then we'll have uh, project demos by our students and we'll have question and answer session. Okay, so this is our fourth year in Google Summer of Code as the Jenkins organization. Uh, this year we had about 20 project ideas um, when we started. We were able to accept seven students. So we now have seven live projects. We have uh, two to four mentors per project this year, which is great. Um, I, don't, I don't think we, we had that in the past years. Uh, and we're having projects from both Jenkins and Jenkins X. And you can see on the slide down on the slide, the link to uh, our list of projects. Okay, so which GSOC organization are we? We are the Jenkins uh, organization. And this is where, um, this is the organization that's hosting the Jenkins and Jenkins X projects. The Jenkins organization operates under a, an umbrella organization called the CD Foundation and they have their own Google Summer of Code projects. And um, the CD Foundation, I think, I believe operates under the Linux Foundation. Is that correct, Oleg? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so there's yet another umbrella organization on top of all of this, and it has its own uh, Summer of Code projects. We have seven projects this year, as mentioned earlier, the custom Jenkins distribution service, Git plugin performance improvements, GitHub checks for Jenkins plugins, machine learning plugins for data science, Jenkins Windows services, YAML configuration support, external fingerprint storage, and Jenkins X apps and add-ons consolidation. Okay, so, with the link to the presentation, you can click on these hyperlinks and visit the pages of each project. Our communication channels, should you wish, should you wish to reach out to us. So we have the mailing list, which is a Google group. We are on Gitter under Jenkins CI slash JSOG dash SIG, SIG for special interest group. The regular office hours are on Wednesdays online slash as needed, and they're announced in the Gitter chat. The different projects have their specific channels for uh, communicating, uh, for member communication. So you're welcome to join them and participate. And Jenkins X uses uh, Slack and there is the link to their channel. We want to also recognize and thank our students, our mentors, our org admins, and the community members that participate actively in the, um, in the Summer of Code projects, the people that participate in the mailing lists with advice, answers, responses. Um, we also want to thank the subject matter experts who uh, from, um, from, from give that give us guidance and advice. So it, Google Summer of Code and Jenkins would not be possible with everybody participating the way they are today. So thank you everyone for contributing. All right, so yesterday we had these uh, demos and today we're gonna have the next set of demos and they are the following. We're gonna start with um, custom Jenkins distribution build service by Sladin. Following that will be machine learning plugins for data science by Logi. And the third presentation today will be Jenkins Windows services by Boudicca. 
Okay, so before we start, um, I should pause and ask if there are questions or remarks or additional things that uh, people on the call would like to add. Just thanks again to all contributors this year. This year, as you will see today, and as you may have seen yesterday, all projects evolve uh, really well. We have something demoable, and in many cases, already available to Jenkins users. Um, so, yeah, I think that uh, the main objective for driving uh, Jenkins evolution and facilitating contributions, sharing experiences, all of that is working really well this year. So, thanks a lot to everyone uh, who's involved in GSOC. It is impressive how many of these things are reaching users already, even before the end of GSOC. Thanks very much to the students. Okay, let's get started with our first presentation, the Custom Jenkins Distribution Build Service by Sladin. I will stop the screen share and Sladin, you can take over the share. Thanks, Martin. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I will start screen sharing. Okay. Give me a minute. Yeah, that sounds good. So, yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Sladen, and I'll be presenting to you the Jenkins Custom Distribution Service Phase 2. Um, I hope everyone are doing well. Um, okay, so let's begin. So uh, I, before I begin, I would just like to introduce my mentors. Um, we, are, we have Christian, Martin, uh, Rick, and Parichai. And we have Oleg as well as, uh, as a technical advisor on the project. They've been very, very helpful um, throughout this phase too. So let's begin. So let me just recap about what the project is about. It's about building an out of the box usable Jenkins distribution with a very, very simple user interface. Um, with the ability that the community can share configurations. So if someone develops something that is widely used, um, it can be shared. And we also try to maintain easy access around the world. So we try to make this service available everywhere because usually users have problems with accessing certain, um, certain maybe the plugin um, site or something else. So uh, this service would be available self-hosted. So if you want, you can um, host it yourself and take all the advantages that the, that the custom distribution service package will provide. Yeah, so moving on. So what's new? Um, let's talk about what was added in phase two and it's been a really, really good phase. So some of the major things that were added were, was the VAR generation. As you remember, uh, the last time we had the phase one demos, you could generate the VAR, but you did not have the ability to download it. So we have added that ability now. You can download your VAR. Um, pull on with your customization, with all of your plugins and all of the, um, if you want to build it off a base Docker image and so on that comes with war generation. Um, you can now filter plugins. So you, you don't have to search for them. If, if these plugins are part of the most used plugins, um, if you want to find the most trending plugins, so on and so forth, we, the service now provides an ability to filter them just like the plugin side does. Okay, so moving on, um, the ability to search and download community configurations. Um, one of the core ideas of the custom distribution service was the ability to be able to download and um, search your configuration. So it's in, so it's very easy for the community to now um, to now sift through all of the community generated configurations and um, and you know uh, download them, maybe have a look at them, modify them, and even re-upload them in some cases. So that's, that's been added um, as an additional bonus and the ability to share community configurations, obviously. So the last time you remember, we came out with the community configurations concept, but there wasn't any, uh, there wasn't any central repository to host it. We now have this, the community configurations repository up and running on my personal account, and we will be taking necessary steps to, to share that um, repository uh, under the Jenkins organization. So it's one place. Um, one place area to, to share configurations. If you do not like to share configurations via that repository, um, we will have multi uh, repository support. 
So if you have, if you are working in a private company and you have your community configurations on a specific repository, you will have the ability to configure that uh, URL inside our environment variable. So um, we have that feature supported as well. Okay, where can I add the new configuration? So you can add the new configurations on the link given below. Um, it's the custom distribution service community configuration. And this is a temporary location for the community configurations until they are hosted inside the Jenkins organization. Um, if you, you can still add configurations to this page as of now, um, they will be, uh, once the repository is hosted under the Jenkins organization, you will be able to see them under a single umbrella. Um, for now, you can definitely visit this, um, this, uh, this page, the GitHub repository. Once I come out of my demo, I, I might be able to show you, um, to show you the GitHub repository as well. So I think the next one is the demo. Yeah, it's time for enough of talking. Um, let's get let's get straight to the the demo. So um, yeah, so let's get out of my screen. Okay. So um, as you remember, the last time for those who were present at the phase one demonstration, um, the page for the for the plugins for the plugin cards remains the same. The additional feature that we're talking about here is um, is the ability to be able to search uh, to be able to I'm sorry filter plugins uh, based on their uh, trending based on the title the release date and so on and so forth so if you want to add plugins according to um, according to their filters you can definitely do so so for this demo I will be adding a couple of plugins to the demonstration to the to the package and uh, we'll, we'll be able to have a look at how uh, the custom war package or the service functions um, under them. So it doesn't really matter. Okay. I'm sorry. It doesn't really matter what plugins you're adding for now, since it's a demo, but if you do have a specific configuration, say the, for a particular Kubernetes operator or so on, you can definitely search for those plugins and add them. So I'll be adding, um, just a couple of plugins from different places. Um, one second. Yeah. So this one stays the same, um, as the last time. So I'll be adding, um, the title, the var version. The artifact ID. So these are just uh, uh, pre configuration items that I've already um, selected. This is for demo purposes. You can add your Docker tag. So if you want to build, um, build the, the um, I'm sorry, the distribution on some base image, you can do that as well. So yeah, you can select one and you can hit generate package configuration. Ah, and there it is. So what the service now does, it's, it's much faster in pulling all of the plugins in. The last time you remember, it, it, took, it took more than 30, 40 seconds to pull in all of this data and generate the configuration. It's much faster because of the plugin caching. Um, as you can see now, you, can, um, you have whatever plugins I've added in, in, in the past uh, step. So we added the Cucumber reports and um, the AS editor, and uh, you can see them under, under plugins. So uh, you also have the Docker, the Docker tags and stuff, uh, along with the bundles and whatever description you've added. So, uh, yeah, so for the first step, you can download the package of configuration if you want to run as is. If you want to just download this, um, you can hit it and you can see it's downloaded on the bottom left of your screen. Uh, so for this demo, I've actually picked out a configuration that generates in a, in a lesser time because war generation is a, is a time consuming process. And I've picked out a configuration that is, um, that is much uh, faster to generate. Um, so this is just for time purposes so that it, the generation does not take more than, you know, because the generation sometimes takes a couple of more than a couple of minutes. So I would just be copying a single one here and I'll be explaining to you what this is. Uh, so the reason I've chosen this is first of all, it has a Docker base, but it does not have build set to true. So we won't be building any Docker image. Otherwise the WAR package just sets out to go ahead and download all of the, the images. And some of those images can be 200, 300 MB, which takes a lot of time. Also, the other thing that I've added here is we do not have a configuration as code set up. So if you would like in the future to have configuration as code, um, um, the feature supported, please do leave feedback in our feedback channels and we will try to make that happen. Okay, so now moving on to the download var. So the, the demo, the most important part. So I'll be showing you the terminal so that it is, um, because it's a self-hosted service and you might be able to, um, you might want to see what's happening. Um, if at all this is hosted, uh, even on a server, you you sh should be able to see it. So I put the download button, and yeah. So yeah, I'll take a. I'll take yes, me. What's that? Invalid command. Why is it written? I'm sorry. Help! 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 Help!
Okay. Fixed. Okay. No worries. That was okay. So yeah, um, as you can see, um, you'll have the plugins downloaded um, and all of the all of the custom war packager um, services that are being running in the background. So yeah, as you can see, you have the build successful, and um, once that is done, um, the custom war packager just returns the um, returns the war back to us, and you can download that as well. So yeah, so just give it a couple of minutes. Yeah, there it is. So in the bottom left of the screen, as you can see, we have the war file generated. Um, you can now uh, run this command as you run a normal Jenkins war. So you can run the Java jar Jenkins war, and it will spin up with all of your um, with all of your favorite plugins. Um, yeah, this was uh, downloaded the demo. Uh, you did not have this ability the last time, and now it's been added to the custom uh, distribution service. So the one of the most major um, major milestones for this entire project has been uh, has been achieved, which is which is great. Um, okay, moving on to something else that was added. Um, let's go and have a look at the community configurations. Okay, so the community configuration right now is an empty place because there aren't community configurations, but I have added a sample. So um, in the previous slide, if you remember, I I said that you can. Um, this is the place where we had our. Um, let me just see if I can copy the link and open up a new tab. Yeah. So this was the place where you can um, where you can see all of our configurations live added by the community. Um, this is just an empty repository for now. So you have the sample empty configuration. So if a user adds a configuration here, you will be able to see it on our service. So for now, it's just a sam sample empty YML, which has been picked up from the Rix repository. So what the service does is once you point it to your, the repository you want, it will just go ahead and fetch it. So as you can see, the configuration name is sample empty dot YML. We do not have the description as of now because uh, we do not have support for the readme. Uh, but yeah, if that is a question that you want answered, uh, yes, we will be having a description later on. Um, yeah. So once you can see this, you can now you can now click to view details. So if you click to view details, it will take you back to this page. Uh, you now have the YML, and you can repeat the exact same features that I repeated for um, for generating my own custom uh, package or service. So if, uh, if if there is a very popular configuration that you want right out of the box, you can just view it, um, have it seen here, and then you can just download it. Um, so yeah, okay, yeah, because we do not have the Jenkins version specified, so yeah, you'll have the error as well. Um, yeah, so that that was it for the community configuration page. Um, if if um, I do not think there is anything else that is left um, to be shown, um, but yeah, that was uh, that's that was it. The three major features of the ability to filter plugins, um, the ability to download the WAR file, and the ability um, to search community configurations as well as create an open pull request um, to this repository so that you can you can host whatever plugins you want um, is, is an additional feature. Um, yeah, apart from this, um, I've also just, I think, shown the repository. Yeah, that's it. I think that that was it. Um, yeah, so I can enter, I can enter um, the presentation mode again. And, uh, okay. Quickly, it's preloading. Just give it a second. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that was it for the demo. How can you participate? So we have our communication channels on GitHub, um, the Jenkins custom distribution service. Also, we have the project page. So you can click on these URLs and have a look at them for facilitation of feedback. Okay, what's next here? This is uh, something important. So we have the GSOC phase three coming up. Um, so what are we doing in phase three? I'll just recap in a minute. Before that, we would be focusing on improving the user experience even further. So as we reduced the time to fetch plugins, we would be we would be making things much much easier for the user so that you know what's happening on the screen. For example, when you download a WAR file or when you download a package or service, you can don't kind of have the feedback right now. We will be adding that in the next phase. Um, yeah, one of the major ideas we were exploring is the idea of having an image controller inside the service. Um, a sort of since it's a generator service, we were exploring the idea of having a multi uh, a multi-purpose image controller or multi-purpose image generator. Discussions for those have begun. Um, I will be posting up uh, uh, an email in the mailing list for users to to have a look and facilitate feedback. Uh, yeah, but that was some of the major stuff that we were looking at for phase three. So I'll be coming out of presentation mode and um, having a look at the milestones for phase three. So just a quick recap of the milestones for phase three. Um, yeah, so 
just a, just two of the major milestones was having an initial version release. We do not have an initial version release as of now, but we are very, very close to that. Uh, that and unit testing for all features. So a couple of features have unit testing remaining. So we will be having a testing plan, a testing architecture for that. And, and of course, the image controller synergy. So um, these are the three major milestones that we will be exploring for for phase three, along with uh, adding adding additional features like maybe improving the user experience or having a developer's guide. Um, yeah, apart from that, I guess um, that was it for for the demo. Um, let me just have a look if I'm missing any slides. No, not okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's about it from uh, from the demo. Um, I'll be giving the mic back to Martin and we can move on if you have any questions. Thanks. Thank you. Slide in. Is there any questions? Not from me, but it looks really great. Um, and yeah, now it really iterates, so there is no stops left. So it's a pleasure to see uh, how it works um, in real. I launched it a couple of days ago. Well, basically uh, following guidelines, it uh, works pretty fine. So thanks for preparing that, and hopefully it will be really useful. For, for those who want to customize the Jenkins instances. Thanks. Uh, Slide in. This is uh, Yanis Muchasem, one of the mentors, and I'm really excited seeing this uh, plugin because uh, I see a lot of utility in the space that I'm working in, where we want to build um, custom configurations, for example, for life sciences and data sciences for Jenkins, and I think this is going to be um, a great tool. One quick question is. Um, what are the advantages of um, these custom configurations versus a Docker image with uh, Jenkins and certain plugins um, embedded in there? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, actually. So uh, the ability to have um, custom configurations is, um, is, is actually, so if you have a look at the custom war packager, it, it doesn't quite actually generate as of now. Docker images, but um, I think that was on the roadmap some time ago. So it is actually similar, but the way the custom distribution service operates, it does, uh, it takes, it picks off the custom configuration of a YML. So um, you can have that entire configuration in a Docker file as well if you want it. So it, it, it's essentially the same, it's essentially the same thing at its very core. Uh, well, uh, actually, custom work packager. So the engine on the, the hood has a few extra features. So, for example, it can package uh, components in development uh, because it doesn't just install them. It also uh, provides builds facilities. So, for example, if you want to apply a custom patch, which is submitted a pull request, or if you want to provide experimental wow. incremental build, you can do it right away with custom work packager. In addition to that, it can actually package not only plugins, it can uh, package a JCAS configuration, groovy hooks, uh, custom system properties, additional libraries right inside the work file so that uh, it produces a portable instance. Uh, for, the, for Docker images, yeah, it produces pretty much the same image as you could produce uh, with existing official Docker image. Uh, but yeah, the real value there that uh, it can package multiple formats and it can utilize Jenkins features to really produce uh, these artifacts, which is not possible with these standard tools. Looks great. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Oh, just before I just before I go, I would like to thank all of my mentors, uh, Martin, Christian, Parichai, Rick, as well as oh, like for the amazing supporting phase. So yeah, it's been absolutely amazing. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, right. I was about to jump in and say it's been this has been a good mile or a good phase too, um, and it looks really awesome. <laughs> I love seeing all the like the ability to be able to download and everything kind of grouped together and the searching and the community configurations. It the project looks really great. So good job over this phase. Yeah, I abandoned the same the direction. So it's good. Thank you, Sladen. Okay, let's move on to the next demo. So the next demo is machine learning plugins for data science by Logi. Okay, 
let me stop my share. Yeah, and Logi, you. you can go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Martin. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, So, uh, so am I audible to everyone? Yes, we see your screen and we can hear you. Yeah, that's perfect. So welcome to my presentation for coding phase two. Um, so let's move on the slides. Uh, so a little introduction about me. Uh, I have I was selected uh, for GSOC uh, as a student for machine learning plugin in Jenkins, and uh, I'm doing uh, computer science uh, and engineering in University of Murdoch. So, before we going to the phase two features, uh, for the summary of phase one, um, the first thing is uh, we have done uh, impl implementation on uh, configuring connection between a Jenkins instance to a IPython kernel. Next, uh, we have uh, added the features to copy the notebooks, uh, Jupyter notebooks. Loggy, Loggy yeah. I think we're, we're still seeing your first slide, your introduction. Are you moving your slides? Yep. Um, I should see. I, maybe you're not sharing the presentation slide. Yeah, maybe you have two screens. Sometimes now you get the same issue with uh, Google Slides. Yeah. These are the tools before. Yeah, is that visible right now? Uh, we see your screen, uh, but yeah, Johannes was uh, asking uh, whether you switch between slides. Yeah. Because it was on, uh, still on the landing. Okay. Yeah. So that's that better. Yeah. 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 Thank, Thank you. Like. Yeah. Thank you, Uh Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, the summary of uh, phase one, uh, we have done uh, uh, some features. Like the first one is uh, we we have done work on uh, configuring connections between Jenkins instance and Python kernel, and next we have done uh, a feature that. Uh, can able to copy uh, Jupyter notebooks uh, to the workspace from the local system, and then uh, a nice feature that uh, that 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 have the ability to uh, convert uh, Jupyter notebooks to Python and JSON. Uh, in the midst of uh, JSON, uh, Zeppelin used JSON type of uh, JSON type of notebooks, so we can also able to convert Jupyter notebook to JSON also. So for the main features we have done, uh, we will. We, we, we were able to run uh, Jupyter Notebooks and a Python script or, or a JSON script. So these are the abstract of uh, my uh, phase one. So these are some uh, screenshots from my phase one. Uh, these are phase one, coding phase one. So here it is, uh, this, this screenshot shows uh, uh, how we configure a kernel uh, in the Jenkins. And uh, you can see here, this is a, uh, how we are adding uh, Jupyter notebooks from the workspace and how we are converting uh, these uh, notebooks to uh, other type of file formats. So I will uh, explain and I will show a very detail in the demo. So this one is uh, our main uh, IPython builder. Uh, we can e either we can use a direct uh, code passing or a file parser. So here we pass the notebooks. So next we move on the, what, what we have done in the phase two. So as uh, Python 2 is uh, deprecated from 2020, uh, we had to upgrade our plugins to uh, support Python 3. And uh, uh, we, we extended the plugin to support uh, master agent communication because uh, Jenkins uh, has the very, very, very interesting features to communicate with Jenkins agent and master. So we have to leverage that uh, feature to extend our plugin and uh, we have published a very descriptive documentation uh, on our uh, github repository on readme so we we also have tested uh, the plugin with uh, virtual environments uh, conda and uh, windows environment so apart from this uh, there are lots of uh, bugs were fixed during this coding phase too so we are uh, like 
we have already started the phase three because um, we are uh, the, so there are there are some of uh, features has been added to the GitHub repository. So uh, this is the progress for this GSOC phase two. And before we go into the demo, I, I, I would like to explain a little more what we, what is going on the demo. So in the master, we have uh, two uh, agents. So we can create agents that will be uh, separate the process from the master. So in the in the GPU agent, we are executing our uh, GitHub code. Uh, we are we are getting the GitHub, we are getting the source code from the GitHub, and we are executing that code. And if you want if we want to get the uh, data sets from the other storage, we can do that from the GPU agent we, that we're gonna create uh, in the demo. So this is the best practice uh, to. Uh, to separate the process from the master when we are doing a machine learning, uh, machine learning workflow. So yeah. So before we go into demo, uh, it is more like than a tutorial, like uh, how our users can uh, get get help get get to run our plugin with the Docker agent. So I gonna use a, a pre-built ML Docker agent. Uh, it is in my uh, Docker Hub repository. I will show uh, how to build your own custom Docker agent. And then we will uh, configure the agent. Then uh, we will get the code from the JIT. Finally, we, I will show uh, the outputs uh, from the notebook. So yeah, so let's, be, let's jump into the demo. Okay, so yeah, close the okay, share. Yeah, this okay. So uh, the, is that visible my my Jenkins dashboard? Everyone can see that? Yes, we can see your Jenkins local host. Yeah. So first of all I have to uh, configure my IPython server. So in the configuring system, I would uh, like to add a server here. So we can search for a uh, server configuration. Uh, so yeah, I have already added uh, one server. So if you want to add a new server here, you can just name it as a test server. If you want to add the server IP address, like if you want to uh, run the job in an agent, uh, either you have to give the IP address of the Docker container, or you can just simply do a local host because it's running on, uh, on the agent. So, okay, I'm sorry. Perfect. So for the launch timer, it's five seconds, and uh, I'm setting the uh, max resource reserve max resource to thirty because uh, it means uh, uh, how many how many lines can I get from the IPython kernel returned when a notebook executed in the uh, IPython kernel. So I'm gonna save these uh, configurations here. So next, uh, we have to create a uh, agent. Be uh, I have already created a one. Oh, I have cre created the agent GPU because uh, we 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 are going to test a GitHub repository that has a Jupyter notebook. Uh, can you see my uh, repository? Yes, Remember? we can see your yeah. screen. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. So here we have a notebook. So we are going to run this notebook uh, from our Jenkins agent. So for that, uh, we have to install uh, some other dependencies like uh, NumPy, SkyPy, Pandas, and SQLer. So uh, it takes time to install uh, in an agent. So I have already, uh, I have already installed Okay, I have already installed in the GPU agent, but I would like to uh, uh, I would like to share how to create a uh, agent here. So it's a quick process. So you can try new node. You can just agent GPU. So here, as we said, the name is agent GPU, and you can use these uh, uh, help buttons and uh, 
uh, it, it shows what the parameters refers to. So you can use that. And for this remote route, I will add a uh, home Jenkins. And for the label, uh, label means uh, if you want to uh, if you want to point the agent in the job description, you have to add some uh, labels for the agent. So I just adding TQ. I have already added a label to my agent GPU, so we can get the uh, get both uh, labels in the job description. I will show you in the description. So here we have two options. So if you install the SSH plugin, it will show uh, three options. So for this demo, I will show uh, to launch how to, how to launch through the uh, uh, command line. So here I'm, I'm using uh, my pre-built Docker agent. So here I'm initiating my uh, agent I have built uh, in, my, uh, in my local machines. If you want to, uh, if you want to build your custom images, uh, you can easily uh, go to our repository. Uh, I will show this. Okay. So you can go to uh, Jenkins machine learning plugin and you we have the docker files and the requirement.txt. If you want to install uh, other Python dependencies, you can uh, add behind these uh, dependencies and you can uh, build the plugin as you want. So. In this demo, I'm going to use my uh, agent. Uh, it has the basic three uh, three dependencies: uh, Jupyter, uh, GPRCO, and uh, Protobuf. So, so we're gonna start this uh, agent. So here, uh, okay. So so it will be started uh, within few minutes, few seconds. Yeah. So, yeah, it has started. And for this demo, we will uh, use the agent GPU. So I'm gonna create a new job here. I like uh, to open something. So here you can uh, select whatever server you have configured in the global configurations. So I'm gonna select this one. And for the G repository, uh, I'm gonna get my, uh, uh, that uh, sample repository from my GitHub repository. So here I'm pasting that. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, I forgot to set the agent. So here you can uh, search for the labels you have specified uh, in the configuration of agents. So I'm gonna use the GPU agent. So I'm so if you want to uh, if you want to convert this uh, train model train model .ipynd, this is the notebook. If you want to convert to this uh, to a Python, uh, it's possible with these features. Uh, you can add a train model .ipynd. So if you convert if you want to convert it to Python, you can just type. And if you want to save in a different name, you can just add train .py. So, so finally we have to add uh, IPython builder here. So if you want to directly run the code, like, like Python scripts like print uh, here or something like that, if you want to do that, you can do here. But uh, in this demo, we will, I will show to run, how to run this train.py. So here I'm adding this train.py. So if you want to, uh, if you want to install more dependencies here, you can just add uh, a shell script and you can install uh, pipe install dependencies. So that's a, a common case in the uh, machine learning field. So we are all set with these configurations. Uh, yep. So we're going to save it. And we will build it. I'm going to show you here that the system is running in the agent here. So yeah, so we can see uh, the train model I can be copied and converted to train.py. So we can see other parameters here. So the model has, has uh, saved this model uh, in our local, uh, in, our, in, the, in the agent, in the agent's uh, file system. So 
further we can do or deploy or test this uh, this model and we can do if you if you want to push this to s3 storage uh, we have jenkins have the plugin s3 publisher so we can use further for the for the development yeah so yeah that's all with my uh, phase two demo uh, i will go to my uh, demo presentation uh, okay. yeah so okay. Okay. Uh, maybe okay. so in the upcoming features uh, we have we are exploring about extracting uh, core segments from the notebook with the uh, user annotations and uh, and and we have already uh, merged this feature with our uh, with our master and uh, we have to also we have to uh, we have we are expected to do this uh, generating json with the results and also we are expecting to test our plugins and there are uh, a few tests uh, have been uh, right have been written to this uh, repository so we will be focusing in the next uh, phase 3 so yeah that's all with my uh, phase 2 and uh, I would, I would like to thank uh, my mentors, Bruno, Anis, and Shivai for the huge support and uh, also thank for the org admins to this opportunity to help the Jenkins community. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Logi. Are there yeah. any comments or questions? For me, if there is no other questions, uh, uh, I wanted to ask about whether you considered uh, using uh, machine learning uh, plugin for analyzing uh, data produced by Jenkins, for example, uh, build reports, test results, because yeah, since we have um, access to um, Jupyter and also to Apache Zeppelin, we could actually do a lot to, uh, to add uh, self-analysis uh, features to Jenkins just by using this plugin. Is it right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, did you consider experimenting with such use cases? Uh, you, you're asking about analyzing this, uh, uh, the data science field? Uh, well, we can just take one example. So there is build failure uh, analyzer plugin in Jenkins. Uh, but yeah, it uh, has a lot of uh, limitations, uh, but at the same time, well, for example, if you use a machine learning plugin, if you're able to uh, just analyze uh, build logs, uh, find some correlations, etc., we could actually use uh, this plugin in order to improve uh, uh, analysis of Jenkins builds. So, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it could be an interesting prototype. No, yeah, I understand that it's not a key use case and that machine learning carry is huge. So we shouldn't be limited just by Jenkins use cases. But yeah, yeah. theoretically it could be helpful uh, for common Jenkins users because Jenkins itself is a source of big data for sure. So uh, that is something we could process there. Well, look, that's a, that's a really good idea. Um, it's not really something that we had thought about. Um, Mm -hmm. But this gives us some, some new ideas on how to uh, sort of ex expand the utility even to, um, you know, the, the DevOps operations, right? Yeah. I've got a specific case on ci.jenkins.io if you're interested in, in exploring it specifically where as an administrator of a system that runs thousands of builds on, on a thousand plus plugins, uh, finding failures that are systematic is really difficult. So machine learning feels like a great way to help me be more effective. Uh, great idea, thank you, Logie. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, any other comments or questions? All right, let's uh, move on to presentation number three. Let me quickly share my screen. 
and third presentation today is the Jenkins Windows Services YAML Configuration Support, and this will be presented by Budika. All right, let me release the share, and Budika, you can start your presentation. Yeah, thank you, Martin. Um, I think you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Ah, great. And, uh, okay. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, uh, so let's go to the presentation. Okay, uh, so uh, welcome everyone to uh, my presentation on uh, GSOP 2020 uh, coding phase two, uh, which is on uh, Jenkins uh, industry wrapper uh, YAML configuration support. So uh, first I will introduce uh, myself in brief. So I am uh, Buddhi Chaturanga and uh, I'm from Sri Lanka. I'm undergraduate of uh, Motu University and uh, this is the uh, first time of uh, Google Summer of Code. My. And uh, I have a little bit of experience in uh, web development in Angular and .NET. Yeah, uh, that's my background. Uh, okay, let's move into the uh, Windows OS wrapper. So, if you talk about uh, Windows Service Wrapper, so Windows Service Wrapper is a tool uh, which uh, previously uh, developed to uh, run Jenkins as a service uh, Windows machine. So that uh, feature is bundled into the uh, Jenkins core and uh, this uh, Windows Service Wrapper tool is uh, configured by uh, XML file. So that was the uh, current, uh, currently it was, uh, it is com configured by an um, XML file. So uh, you can find the project repository by the uh, following link and um, so if we talk about the current configuration so uh, I mentioned that uh, configured by XML file and the XML file name uh, should be uh, the same to the executable file name and uh, it should be uh, located in the same uh, directory where the Windows service of executable is located and uh, the problem in uh, uh, one of the problem in uh, the current implementation we can't specify the configuration file uh, from the command from explicitly and uh, so we have to use the same uh, name and uh, we have to locate it in the uh, same location and uh, in next uh, when it's come to xml configuration there's uh, no schema validation and uh, there are a limited number of uh, validations as well. So you can find the uh, XML configuration files in the uh, uh, following link. So uh, this is how a sample XML configuration file uh, looks like. Yeah, it's great, but uh, it's kind of uh, less uh, human readable. And uh, yeah, I know XML is great for configuration management, but uh, but at the moment, I know uh, it's a little bit of uh, less human readable. So uh, what we are going to do in uh, this project is we are moving into uh, configurations as a YAML file. So that's what I'm going to do in uh, this uh, GSOP 2020 presentation. So uh, why we are moving into YAML configuration? So we all know YAML is uh, less verbose and much more human readable uh, than XML or JSON and also YAML is lightweight than XML and, uh, and uh, JSON, you know, which are not using uh, extra delimiters like brackets. And, uh, and uh, also, you know, uh, YAML is becoming more popular among uh, configuration management tools. So uh, it's obviously uh, uh, very reasonable to uh, move into YAML configuration. So, in the future, uh, developers can easily uh, configure uh, Windows Service Wrapper uh, with YAML. So this is how a YAML configuration file uh, looks like. You know, you can see obviously it's uh, much more human readable than uh, XML version. So uh, yeah, okay. If we talk about the project scope, uh, obviously uh, I will add the YAML configuration support for the Windows Service Wrapper. And uh, as I mentioned before, you know. Um, there's no, uh, we can't uh, at the uh, at the moment we can't specify the uh, configuration file from the uh, command line uh, command line interface explicitly or when there is uh, schema validation we can't skip the schema validation at the moment and uh, we want a kind of uh, structured way to do that so your new CLA was not in my uh, first uh, plan but uh, when uh, we are uh, come up with the project and uh, 
we identified that uh, it's a kind of uh, needed feature. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, XML schema validation uh, feature will be added, and uh, ML schema validation uh, feature will be added. So if you talk about uh, YAML configuration support, so uh, these are the tasks I'm going to do under the YAML configuration support. So YAML object mapping, uh, it's already merged with master and uh, we are using YAML.NET uh, library in order to uh, uh, mapping uh, YAML file into object draft. And uh, uh, we have to validate configurations from the startup is uh, because uh, we, uh, at, the, uh, at the current implementation, if we uh, consider the current implementation, uh, uh, the configuration are not validated at the startup, but uh, what we are going to do in uh, this step is uh, at, the, at the current implementation, uh, uh, configurations are validated uh, on demand. And uh, what we are going to do in uh, this project is uh, we will uh, validate configurations from the startup. So we will uh, not have uh, breaks in uh, runtime uh, because of uh, invalid configuration. And uh, also, uh, we will not have to uh, obsolete the XML support, and uh, we will uh, go, uh, we will have both XML and YAML support parallelly. So definitely, we have to uh, extend YAML uh, sorry Windows Service Server to support both XML and YAML, and it's uh, having already merged. And uh, if you talk about uh, uh, and uh, in uh, Windows Service Server, there are uh, extensions and uh, which are used for. Uh, various purposes and uh, currently there are two uh, internal extensions uh, such as a uh, runaway process killer and uh, I think a shared directory mapper. So uh, also uh, these extensions are uh, configured, uh, we have to uh, provide configurations for these uh, extensions as well. So uh, we, uh, we will uh, provide those configuration from the uh, configuration file uh, that we are used to provide configuration for Windows Service Wrapper as well. Uh, so we have to uh, uh, update uh, Windows Service Wrapper to uh, support uh, YAML configuration for those extensions as well. And, uh, if it, uh, and uh, YAML uh, configuration documentation. And uh, I have, uh, uh, it's already merged and uh, yeah, uh, you can find those implementation in uh, given uh, links. So, uh, if you talk about uh, key updates in uh, YAML configuration support in phase two, uh, as I mentioned, I uh, extend the Windows Service Wrapper for, uh, to support both XML and uh, YAML configurations. Uh, you can find the implementation in the given link. And uh, YAML uh, support for extension, I just started it. Uh, it's kind of challenging actually. Uh, I mean, uh, those extension need a, di uh, a different structure of uh, configuration so uh, we can't actually uh, provide kind of a structured uh, uh, way of uh, configuration we have to uh, dynamically uh, querying uh, our configuration object in order to uh, uh, fetch in those configurations so i just started and it's uh, become more challenging and yeah it's really interesting i think uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, uh, learn new things uh, in uh, I, I hope there will be new things uh, to learn in this task and uh, uh, the YAML configuration uh, documentation. So uh, as I mentioned, it's already merged, but it's uh, almost a copy of uh, XML configuration file. But uh, I think uh, uh, in the near future we will uh, move into uh, we, we will move into uh, like uh, something like uh, Windows Server Server or GitHub or something like. So then uh, we can. Uh, uh, provide uh, present those uh, configuration documentation uh, with some kind of a fancy way like uh, configuration details and uh, both XML and uh, YAML examples. <coughs> uh, yeah. So uh, these are the uh, key updates about uh, YAML support, uh, support in uh, phase two. So, and uh, uh, there are some uh, uh, configuration uh, syntax changes as well. So previously, uh, we can pro uh, we could provide environment variables as uh, uh, as a dictionary, but uh, uh, in this uh, uh, phase, uh, we update uh, uh, environment variable to provide as uh, array of uh, QLU pairs, like uh, shown in this documentation uh, in the picture. And also uh, timestamp value. Now we can provide uh, in uh, this uh, manner, uh, much uh, human readable manner. Also, this is how it is implemented in XML as well. Uh, yeah. 
Okay. Uh, if you talk about new CLI, as I mentioned before, uh, there are a few problems. Uh, we can we can't uh, uh, continue without uh, uh, new configuration uh, command line interface. Uh, actually, obviously we can uh, do that, but uh, having a more structured ways uh, uh, will be really good. So we uh, got uh, come up with a, a new command line interface. So uh, if you talk about the uh, new uh, the updates in uh, phase two we uh, observe uh, redirect uh, option and also uh, we remove test wait command and uh, we add uh, wait uh, as option uh, uh, to the uh, test command and also same uh, we remove the stop wait command and uh, we add the wait as option to the stop command so we can provide those options if, if those options true then uh, the uh, it will uh, behave like uh, test state and uh, stop wait. <clears throat> okay. Uh, if we talk about uh, phase three, after this uh, phase three, I will move into demonstration. Okay. Um, if we talk about phase three, and uh, phase three will be uh, much more challenging because uh, there are a lot of things to complete in phase three. Actually, uh, I have to, uh, in, in YAML configuration support, I have to. Uh, Finish uh, configuration validation uh, on the startup and uh, uh, YAML support for extensions as well. And uh, when it comes to new CLI, uh, we have to merge it. And uh, there's a new patch uh, called version three in uh, Windows Service Shop. And uh, next turn is uh, doing a lot of contribution there. And uh, after a few discussion, I think uh, we can uh, continue with the uh, new CLI as well. Uh, yeah, and uh, YAML schema validation and schema <coughs> XML schema validation uh, have to be finished. And XML schema validation, I have uh, done uh, some amount of thing and uh, have to update uh, unit test and uh, documentation for that as well. So uh, yeah, that's about uh, my presentation. So uh, I'll move into my uh, demonstration now. Uh, Okay, uh, I think you can see my command prompt now. Yes, we can. Oh, okay, great, <laughs> great, okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, anyway, uh, however, there's no any fancy uh, <laughs> user interfaces for my uh, demonstration, you know, uh, everything done in the uh, command line. Okay, uh, uh, this is, uh, Actually, uh, there are no uh, big uh, functional difference uh, difference from uh, in contrast to phase one in uh, my demonstration because uh, in phase one I uh, create a POC and uh, it included uh, both of these, but uh, in, uh, but uh, there were many updates underlying actually. Uh, so uh, anyway, presentation uh, be much more like uh, what I have done in phase one. Okay, uh, so this is ex executable uh, of uh, Windows Service uh, Trapper that I'm going to run, and uh, this is the Jenkins.par file. And uh, uh, yeah, so this is the uh, configuration file that I'm uh, going to use for Windows Service Trapper in this demonstration. So, okay, you can see the configuration uh, file, Windows.camel file is located in the same uh, directory where the executable is located, and uh, the names are uh, pretty much the same. Okay, uh, uh, first let's install the uh, uh, Windows Service Tracker. Uh, so we can use uh, Windows install command and it's automatically find the configuration file with the uh, Windows, uh, sorry, uh, name of the executable. So yeah, you can see, uh, uh, you see uh, the, uh, uh, it's uh, configured the ID as Jenkins and also it's installed as uh, with the uh, ID of Jenkins. So, okay, uh, for uh, let's uh, confirm whether it has uh, been installed correctly uh, in uh, our service manager. Uh, so, okay, uh, it's here, and uh, but uh, status is not uh, running still. So, we have to uh, start the Windows Service Shop in order to uh, bring uh, uh, to the running still. So, let me start. Uh, Windows Service Trapper and uh, yeah, now it's starting and uh, we can confirm uh, from here. Uh, yeah, uh, now it's in running status and uh, we can confirm it by uh, going to the 
uh, lock unlocked. Uh, let's see whether Jenkins is running. Yeah, okay, perfect. Jenkins is running on uh, local host 8081, so we know it's working. Uh, with YAML configuration file, so you can see the configuration of the environment uh, variable configurations and uh, uh, there's no timestamp value anyway. Uh, so it has been changed uh, in, uh, structurally uh, in contrast to phase one. So um, uh, that's how uh, the YAML, uh, it's work with the YAML configuration. So let me uh, stop the service and uh, okay let's see whether it has been stopped uh yeah it's now not in the running state and uh, let's confirm it from here and uh, yeah perfect it's uh not running anymore and uh let me install the service as well yeah okay uh, perfect. Uh, let's refresh. Okay, now not uh, now uh, uh, now service has been removed from the uh, service manager. Okay, uh, that's uh, the uh, demonstration of uh, YAML uh, configuration. So let me show you how uh, new command line interface works. And uh, okay, first uh, let's uh, move into this uh, directory and. Uh, let me close this instance and open a new instance of Visual Studio Code from this directory. <coughs> okay, um, uh, there are a lot of configuration files in uh, this directory. Actually, I make a few configuration files in order to show the, uh, the feature uh, which we can uh, uh, specify the configuration file. Uh, uh, in the uh, command line interface uh, explicitly. So uh, this is a configuration file that I'm going to use in uh, this demonstration. And uh, first of all, uh, let me uh, show you uh, the new features of the new CLI. I show those uh, things in uh, for phase one as well. So let's uh, go for a uh, quick recap. So there are uh, a help option uh, which provide us all the commands which are available and, uh, uh, and uh, it will show uh, we can uh, show uh, uh, view all the options uh, which are available with uh, particular commands. Uh, as example, I take uh, uh, the install command. So in sw install and let's and help and we can see all the options are available with the install command. So uh, now I'm going to use this option, uh, the config file option, and uh, I can provide the configuration file with this option, okay. Uh, it's W install. I will use the short one and paste the configuration file. Perfect. Now we start with the uh, YAML. I uh, put a simple console out in order to identify which type of configuration we are using. Okay. Now it's starting Jenkins. Uh, I confirm whether it's uh, sorry. Uh, it's just uh, installed here. Okay. Uh, let me start the um the uh in the service wrapper instance as well so let's confirm that it is working mm -hmm. yeah perfect it's working uh so uh that's uh that way we can uh, specify the command uh specify the configuration files from uh with the uh, new configuration a uh, new command line interface uh using a new command line interface so let me uh, stop uh, sorry uh, sorry, uh, yeah, you can see uh, in the previous uh, command, I forgot to provide the uh, configuration uh, file command. So uh, the beha it's behave like uh, uh, so when the, uh, the when the option is not given, so this uh, uh, this value uh, will be uh, automatically skipped and uh, it will roll back to uh, XML file configuration because uh, it's the 
uh, base uh, configuration file i mean it's the uh, base behavior of uh, basic behavior of uh, the windows size wrapper so i uh, and the current uh, uh, according to the current implementation when uh, we uh, don't provide the configuration file it will automatically uh, roll back to the uh, xml version so now it uh, find for xml version anyway i uh, forgot to uh, uh, because of i forgot to uh, provide the configuration uh, extension uh yeah uh, that's all about the demonstration for my presentation up to now and uh, okay uh, let me move into the presentation again uh so if we talk about face i think uh, i think i talk about face uh, already yeah so that's uh, what i have to talk about uh, demonstration and uh, yeah uh, it's time for q and a so if you have any section i'm uh, free to uh, answer anything thank you burika are there any questions or comments from the audience mm -hmm. oh, from me just uh, thanks a lot for the demo and thanks a lot uh, for the recent patches yeah, we haven't uh, released uh, the key change uh, YAML configuration support yet, though in the current state, it looks like we will be able to do it uh, early in the next coding phase, hopefully early next week, so that uh, this change becomes available uh, to Windows Service Wrapper users. And uh, yeah, let's see uh, what is our timeline, but yeah, hopefully it will be also available in uh, Jenkins uh, in August, so that uh, people will be able to play is uh, YAML configurations there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions, comments? All right. Well, I just want to say thank you to everybody for nice presentations and Oleg Martin and uh, for your organizational skills, keeping this together <laughs> and going. Thank you. Yeah, thanks okay. for the feedback. Okay, thanks everyone uh, for this demo session. Uh, we'll okay. publish the video within a few hours. And yeah, looking forward to meet you at the final uh, demos in one month. And we will be doing them as Jenkins Online Meetup, so uh, there will be a lot more participants. And, yeah, I, it will be an interesting experience. I believe that uh, all projects are ready to present, so yeah, looking forward to that. Thanks, all. All right, thanks for those concluding remarks, Oleg. Okay. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.